The Nine Diocturian Council Predictions about the upcoming eclipse We are the Octurian Council. We are pleased to connect with all of you. We are always approaching another level of consciousness here in the ninth dimension, and so are you there in the four. Every step forward for you is a step up in terms of your vibration and the level of your consciousness. You don't ever have to worry about regressing, backsliding, or remaining stagnant for that matter, because you are always progressing with each and every breath. Now, you want to understand that your evolution does not have to involve pain and suffering, just as it doesn't have to involve chaos and cataclysmic events. You want to understand that you are there to determine how you grow spiritually. You can grow very fast through meditation, but you can also grow by doing something that you love. You can grow spiritually by falling in love. Now, of course, you do set up challenges for yourselves. But those challenges are there to remind you of how strong you are, how powerful you are, how capable you are of overcoming anything. And that is true because you are source energy beings and nothing less. Therefore, as source energy beings, we invite you to create your experience of your spiritual evolution and know that nothing outside of you is determining whether or not you evolve spiritually. You can take advantage of an eclipse, a full moon, an equinox, a solstice, or any other event to tune in more to the energies that are always helping you grow and expand. But you don't have to wait until anything is going to happen in order to experience. Your spiritual up-leveling of self you can decide that you are going to become your higher self today because your desire to do so is so strong and your resistance to achieving that goal is minuscule or non-existent. We tell you this because we don't want you to always feel like you have to wait for the next prediction to come along to tell you that now it is time for you to go to the next level of your consciousness. We also don't want you to think that you have to go to some far off place and take some plant medicine there in order to grow spiritually. You can grow spiritually because you decide that as an awakened soul, that's what you want to do. And again, no one can stop you and you don't have to wait for anything or anyone in order to take that next giant leap forward for yourself. It is always nice to look forward to something like an eclipse or some other event that will happen in the skies, because it gives you something to look forward to and get excited about. Ultimately, you will determine what your experience of that event will be for you. And while many others may tell you it's about this or about that, you will have to decide for yourself what you want to make it about for you. And we promise you, you can take all of the evolution of consciousness that is available to you in a moment that you decide to do so. We are the Octurian Council, and we have enjoyed connecting with you. Channel. Daniel Scranton next message. Between the eclipses Mercury stations retrograde. The liminal space between the eclipses becomes that much more internalized as Mercury appears to shift back from where it came. On April 1st, Mercury will station for its retrograde phase, which lasts until April 25th. All the Mercury retro rules apply. Be circumspect about making promises, signing contracts, making major decisions. If this is something that was already decided and agreed to, you may see some delays and do-overs, or not at all. If that is the case, it may prove to be fortuitous. Enjoy the ride, if you get to your destination or not. In the end, these Mercury retro phases are critical for our mental health and overall well-being. As we find ourselves reminiscing, reflecting, remembering and unearthing, we are also going through a period of assimilating and processing all of the events, decisions, and circumstances that have brought us to this place in time. There can be issues during this period that can derail communications. Find us impulsively leaping in where we probably shouldn't. And with Mercury and Aries saying things that could prove to be regrettable, this is not the best time for those important discussions. 
but do pay attention to what comes up. This is when we try to make sense of and put the pieces of our lives together. Do be aware that the ability to hold your tongue will be progressively more difficult towards the end of next week when Mercury in Aries takes a knot, semi-square, to Aries ruler, Mars. This is when Mercury gathers enough courage to just tell it like it is, no apologies, and come what may. But this could also get a bit messy, especially as we sit here bitwixt the eclipses. We have a tendency to blame everything on Mercury when in its retrograde phase. And truth be known, it does feel like all sorts of technical difficulties have wreaked mayhem and confusion this past week. But you can't look at these retrograde phases in isolation. We just had a lunar eclipse in aspect to erratic Uranus. And the powerful solar eclipse in Aries is just around the corner. Not to mention the Jupiter slash Uranus conjunction on April 20. There's no telling what can happen when the eclipses are in such perfect alignment and a new Jupiter slash Uranus cycle looms on the horizon. Be open for what comes. Be open and flexible. We stand here in the void between the lunar and solar eclipses, as if in the eye of a storm. Some things may fade, while other things are brewing, drying some together, while parting others. And even if we can't necessarily see where all this will lead in the end, we are still asked to proceed as if we do. Some will feel like they are overwhelmed with chaos, activity, and change. Others will feel as if their very life force is being drained out of them with the upcoming the solar eclipse. But right now we are in the veil between the eclipses, where change, time warps and incomprehension can all converge and all we can do is walk through to the other side. What the retrograde phase of Mercury in Aries, April 1st till the 25th, can be good for taking care of unfinished business, tie up those loose ends, swiftly remediate and complete those projects gathering dust and cluttering up your life, clearing up the clutter in your environment and your life also brings clarity to your mind, reminiscing and remembering, connecting with people from the past, whether that be a reunion or a gathering of the tribe. Reconnecting can help you to put the pieces of your life together and also helps you to remember why you were together in the first place. Letting go. Mercury is in Aries, a sign of new beginnings. It prefers to travel light. What might you want to release and let go of that you've been carrying around for way too long? Mercury in Aries rarely slows down, even when in its retrograde phase. But this is when we are asked to take time to withdraw, reflect, and connect with ourselves. This inner reflection helps to make better sense of our lives and to process all that we have been learning, experiencing, and sensing up until now. One other piece of the puzzle. Shortly after Mercury makes its inferior conjunction on April 11, Mercury will make a conjunction to the centaur Chiron on April 15. This is the most significant aspect Mercury will make during its retrograde phase. The second is a conjunction to the North Node when Mercury stations direct. It is the second of three conjunctions that Mercury will make to Chiron. The first being March 21st, April 2nd, 15th, May 3rd, 7th. This connection with the Wandering Centaur is especially significant, as it is also a signature of the upcoming solar eclipse on April 8th, which is also conjunct Chiron. Therefore, Mercury's transits can help us to make sense of the significance of the solar eclipse, both in society as well as in our own lives. Eclipses can often point to important turning points in our lives. And anything that can help us to achieve a deeper understanding of what that is and how that can operate in our lives should be taken advantage of. And with Mercury in the picture, that can include understanding the wisdom of how we use our words and what we use them for. Do we use our words to cause harm, division, and conflict? Or do we courageously use our words and expertise to heal old wounds and rifts? By Lorraine, 